Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Eterno. Welcome to episode three of Network Chat Programming. So, we created an awesome t uh, label and a um, text field for the user's name. Now we're going to do the same thing for. Um, let's just place it right about here for the IP address and the port. So let's call this, uh, I guess, address, and we'll get rid of the text inside it. Um, and I believe the size of this was. What was it? It was 165 by 28, so let's just change that to 165. I, I hope you guys can see what I'm doing, by the way. I think I'll zoom in, but I might forget. I don't remember everything. Um, okay, and let's also do the same for name. Uh, so in fact, I think we can copy and paste. Yeah, we can, okay. So let's just place it right about here. And we'll call this, um, let's see. We'll call it uh, IP address, I guess, just so people... Um, can get what it means. We want to be as descriptive as we can. And we might even give examples in a minute. We'll see. Let's move this up a bit. I feel like it's too low. Okay, let's just move that down a bit. Down. Yeah, okay, this is sometimes annoying, but you can, um, what you can do is you can actually manually, if we hit the balance here, we can actually manually put the Y to like, let's say 100 or whatever, and we'll move it down as you can see. Maybe 98. You might want to have to get creative with this. Uh, let's select both components and center them uh, horizontally. So there we go. And we'll do the same thing for the port. Um, in fact, I think I might move them down a bit, and you'll see why in a minute here. Um, probably like that. Yeah, and I think that's centered. Okay. That's pretty rad. Um, we'll do this exact same thing. In fact, we'll just probably just copy and paste. How do I get rid of this? Escape. Uh, we'll just probably copy and paste this and put it about here, and that'll be the port. Um, and you guys might want to go through this and actually make it symmetrical or whatever, but this is for demonstration purposes, so whatever. Okay, let's make that a bit smaller, center it, and we're good to go. So, bring that up a bit. Um, what, I, what The other thing I wanted to do is actually copy and paste this name stuff and uh, give an example. Like, we probably don't need to do that for name, but um, over here we might, for example, put, like, example, uh, I don't know, 192.168.0.2 or something as an example of what it, what it means. Just, just, to, just for fun. <laughs> just to make sure that people... Um, understand. We want to make this pretty pretty nice, right? Why not? And for the port, we might put example like freaking my favorite port, 8192. I seem to always use that when I'm programming. Don't know why, I just do. Okay. Sweet. That's pretty swell. Alright. So, now that we've done that, um, all that remains is pretty much a button. So let's, I think that, um, let's just move a bit of this up. We might even make the window smaller when we're done with this, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, cool, sweet. So, now what we'll do is we'll hit the uh, the J button, button, <laughs> and we'll place a new button here, and uh, we'll probably call it, um, we'll call it, I guess, login. I don't know what you guys want to call it. We'll call it login, and I'll make the text, um, capital L, and we'll center it, and I think that looks about right, yeah big button. Okay, one thing that I might do before I forget is, if you launch this on Windows, it'll probably look um, a lot different. Um, well, it will. It won't look like Mac, but what I mean is, it'll look Java style, and you might not want that. You might want it to look like Windows, like a normal Windows application. Um, and this looks pretty This looks pretty good right here. But uh, on Windows, it might not. So what I want to do here is actually set up a UI manager. Um, so what I want to do here is, under the, in, in the constructor, I'm just going to call it UI manager dot set look and feel, right, to UI manager, whoops, to, to UI manager dot get system look and feel class name, okay, and what that will actually do is it'll set um, the look and feel of the form to be the same as native applications on your platform, okay, so it's really um, quite good. There's a bunch of exceptions here, I this just takes up code. So I'm not going to handle all of them. All you, all you have to do here is if you have a bunch of exceptions here that can be thrown, like class not found, instantiation, Ill illegal access, unsupported look and feel exception. If you have a bunch of that stuff and you don't want it, what you can do is you're going to have to get rid of all of them except, the, except one of them and change it to just exception. And obviously exception, 
all the other exceptions extend exceptions. So if you handle exception, you're handling all exceptions possible. So that'll um that'll work out really nicely here. <laughs> but yeah, so what this will do is um basically make sure that it looks it looks native, okay? So it didn't I don't think it changed anything for Mac, but on Windows you should see a big difference between um between this and if you didn't put it in there. So that's a very important piece of code. Um, but yeah, so now what we've got is pretty much our login form. It's pretty much done. Now, you see how quick that took? If we had done that in friggin' code alone, it would have been a lot, we're taking a lot longer. Um, I'm gonna go through all of these and make sure that, yeah, see, this just says text field. I'm gonna change it to text port. It's because we copied and pasted stuff. Change that to text port. Um, in fact, change it to, change it to TXT port. Um, this says label port, good. Okay, so label port description, port desk, and same thing here, port desk. Oops, not port desk, my bad. What is it? Uh, IP address desk. Um, that's about it, and I guess this is button login. Okay, so wait, so we've just cleaned up a bit of this stuff, and you can see that how much code that we've potentially avoided typing, which is freaking brilliant. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, some things, okay, this is weird. This is kind of weird. Sometimes it creates labels up here, as you can see. Sometimes components are global variables. Sometimes they're not, like this one, for example. Not sure how it chooses, but um, I don't think most of these need to be global variables. I think the only ones that need to be global are probably the, the text fields, because we might be pulling strings from them pretty soon. Um, but yeah, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of I almost said game programming in there, but no, no, no. This is network chat programming. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And um, by the way, if you need a tutorial on how to get the Git stuff to work, because um, I just kind of threw you guys in there, you might not be able to do that. If you want me to walk you through how to fully use GitHub to use this project, because what I'm doing is I'm committing each episode as a different, um, as a different commit. Uh, so in other words, what's happening is that um, whilst the if you just go if you just navigate into source and blah 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 um, into that normal stuff you'll actually see the most up to date version but if you want say you're on you're on a, you're on episode one or for some reason and you just want the code from episode one then you can actually uh, access that code directly because they're separate commits so I'll show you, if you want me to just leave a comment I'll show you guys how to do that because that's no problem at all um, but yeah anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this episode if you did please hit that like button and I'll see you guys next time goodbye.